Under the watchful gaze of probably the cutest subject that we've had on our cover, Marley Trapper. What's up, my girl? It's good to see you. Oh, you got a healthy head tilt. I did get You want to hold that microphone a little closer to your <laughs> sure, mouth? Hi. This is Hanya Curry Trapper, who you might remember from the November issue of Westwood Living. Great to be back in your house. How are you? I'm great. I'm great, Tom. How are you? I'm fantastic. And awesome. I love the fact that we can revisit the November cover twice. Unless Marley can talk, that would make it three times. But you know, to hear your story, and we'll be back at another time to hear Chris's story, but so intriguing, so engaging, and still, although I will tease a little bit, <laughs> the April cover might edge you out. Oh, my goodness. But the November cover was my favorite cover because it had a dog, I know. and it had a prop, and it had a really lovely couple. So yeah. what kind of feedback did you get after you were superstars for a month on the oh, cover we, of a magazine? Oh, we got recognized in Roche Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there were a lot of people that actually did actually read the whole thing and uh, commented and kind of felt like they knew us more and that's what they said. So they got a deeper insight into our life. So that was really special, like having people come up to us and actually recite things that we said and that kind of thing was it's very exciting, actually. What I loved about your story and I love about your story, not past tense, is that it really is a great love connection between you and Chris who have both decided to follow these pathways towards passion or yes. pathways of passion that are not the norm. You know, we don't have a lot of people who live in Westwood who travel around North America playing sold out shows with <laughs> Pat Benatar and Ario Speedwagon. <laughs> and we don't have a lot of people who've dedicated themselves to health and wellness and has taken that full leap of faith. And that's what you do. So yeah. how did we get there? How did we get to yeah. this world of health and wellness? Okay, well, it's it didn't start there. Um, I started as a graphic designer. Uh, I studied at Syracuse and came out of there with a beautiful portfolio of imagery, design, and started working in Boston. And so I that was my career. I thought that was what I was going to do forever. And I really enjoyed it. And I worked at a design firm in the South End for 10 years and... After the 10 years, I was like, well, this is great, but I kind of want to do something on my own. So I decided to take a leap of faith and start my own design firm, which I did. And that was really cool, too. However, I got introduced to yoga. I got I had been doing it in my 20s, but kind of got it very casually. And then my father got really sick with a brain tumor and I started practicing a lot more and I had little children at the time and I started needing yoga more and more. So I started practicing probably four to five times a week and I became very serious um, at it. So after probably, a, I don't know, a couple months of, of seriously practicing, my father passed, my children were young and I was, my husband was on tour. <laughs> oh, so there was a lot going on at the time. Um, and you know, dealing with little children is a lot regardless of any other factors. So yoga was the one thing that I was able to do that was for me, that gave me like a little bit of inner peace and gave me my life back, I guess I could say. So I just went to my mat a lot and I practiced a lot until one day I decided that I wanted to share all these amazing gifts of yoga with others. I actually didn't even start that way. I started teacher training because I wanted to deepen my practice. But of course, when you find something you love so much, you want to share it. So by the end of my training, I was like, where can I teach? I need to do this. I need to share this, these amazing tools. So I started in Roslindale, far away from here. So in Which Westwood. is interesting given your personality that yeah. you would want to retreat a little oh, bit I and was... sort of get out of the gaze of the, the people who you know best. Because yeah. why was that? You just want to get your feet under you? I was terrified to teach in front of people. I had never done that. I was behind a computer designing. So it wasn't comfortable for me. But over the years, I know I started far away, 20 minutes away, and I kept getting closer and closer. And now I'm in Westwood and very happy to be teaching here and in Chestnut Hill and, and all over. Over, actually all over the region so yeah yeah I just started going from design and having that be my full-time career uh, and doing maybe 10% yoga to having the scale shift and yoga kept taking more of my passion more of my life and now I would say I, I still do design I still love designing restaurants in Boston and all over but I'm probably 80% I'm, I would say I'm a full-time yoga teacher now which is really exciting for me because it's it's my biggest passion now. It's eclipsed the design <laughs> in a way. So, but we shouldn't shortchange no, the design. No, 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 because no, no. I love as it. I people love it. drive around Westwood, yeah, without even realizing it, <laughs> they're feeling your influence because they're seeing some of the logos that you have developed. You know, yeah. they get things in the mail, and logos are on these pieces of mail that you've developed. So, just give a little litany of sure. the brands yeah. locally that you've my worked goodness. with. 
I think the most obvious one would be Chiara Bistro on High Street. I've done a bunch of things and it's volunteer work for, for Westwood, just kind of giving back a little bit. So I did the Westwood Food Pantry, um, the Senior Center. Uh, then I did, what else did I do? I've done a bunch of those things. Inclusive Westwood. I've done just a bunch of different nonprofit organizations in Westwood. So I've kind of worked on those designs as well. But I'm mostly, the work has been in Boston based and, and even around like greater suburbs and yeah. So you're going to see how I set the stage. Ah. This was very well done by me. Pat on the back. So you take your ability graphically with what you learned spiritually. Yes. And you said, wow, I can couple those two things and probably reach an audience and affect an audience by publishing a book. Yes. And Rest and Return was born. That's right. But how did you know that you had enough Mm. to make a book? Well, it wasn't even my intention to make a book, I would have to say. The pandemic struck and I knew that the moment I, you know, closed, I remember teaching my last class on a Friday, March 13th. 13th on a Friday, 2020. I remember the, the class that I taught was in Wellesley at HYP. And after the class, the owner called me and said, we're closing the doors. Um, this is where we have to close. And I thought, oh my gosh, now all of these places are going to close. There's going to be no yoga for people and people need it most in these uncertain times. So I said, gathered a bunch of friends and found the center at Westwoods, asked Ellen McFarland if I could borrow the space in the meditation room and said, can I get a bunch of people and videotape some yoga classes here? And she said, of course, absolutely. She totally donated the space. And I had a bunch of my yoga teacher friends and just random friends and said, come with me. We're going to take a yoga class together. And I recorded it and put it on YouTube and said, this is something in the meantime for people. And I got such a great response that I was like, well, maybe I could do more of this. And then that's when the subscription service started happening. I started doing an online subscription service during the pandemic and beyond. So that happened. And so there was like two and a half years of content there Um, every week, sending out my my students the message of the week, because I always base my class on a quote each week. And then I, I kind of theme the physical and the uh, spiritual or emotional component to the theme around the quote. So I had all this content. I also am a photographer, so I did a bunch of pictures and and I would send them also to the people each week with along with the recordings. And so after two years plus of all this recording, I was like, well, maybe I can put this content somewhere so it doesn't just sit on my computer and rot away. And I said, I'll put it into a book just as a journal for me, just so I have all of this content in one place. Sure. And then I started designing <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is kind of pretty. And then I'm like, oh, I can share this meditation technique or maybe I can share this mantra, you know, and explain how to use a mantra or maybe I can, you know, so I started bringing all these little tidbits into it as well. And this book started to form. And by the end of it, I didn't really tell a lot of people I was doing it. And at the end, I was like, wow, I have enough for a year of, of messages, of very simple tools that everybody can access. You know, not people that are only yogis, you know, or people that practice every day. It's, these are for people that have never, ever stepped foot in a yoga studio can understand these concepts. Very, so, very soothing, too, because I have learned from interacting with you that people who need this are people who are going through stuff oh, gosh. somebody who lost a relative somebody who's going through a divorce someone who lost a job yeah. and you've become in essence a soother and yeah. i've seen you sign books for people who are struggling yeah. in quotes or not and i think that that's got to be fulfilling for you oh my gosh yes in fact when you actually start talking to somebody and if you just look at them for just a minute longer or like not a minute, that's a long time. But if you were to look at them for like a couple seconds longer than just a quick hello, you'll probably see that there's stuff going on underneath the surface. So and I think just being a yoga teacher, people feel very comfortable sharing with me. So I've learned and that everybody suffers, everybody. You know, and it's like the first Buddhist principle, you know, uh, the first noble truth is that suffering exists in this world and it's here to stay and we should recognize it. So uh, that's the thing. It's like once you start to realize that everyone's suffering, we have a common humanity that we can share with each other. And just being able to be vulnerable enough to, to open yourself up to that allows other people to feel open and then they get to share. And in the sharing is the healing. So that's where the power comes. So I feel like this book is meant to empower, but it's also meant to remind people that we're all struggling and that sometimes we just need to give ourselves a little rest 
And sometimes we need to just give ourselves a little bit of love and compassion because we're sort of mean to ourselves a lot. So that's kind of the message of the book. I go through a bunch of different concepts from different thinkers and spiritual leaders that I love so much. And I like to share them in ways that people can digest. So they don't have to go through and read like, you know, all of these sutras. And, Ooh, there's Marley. <laughs> It's not regular that I get a chance to talk with somebody who has roots here that go back decades. Class of 89 yes. out of the class of Westwood. <laughs> so compare growing up here in the late 70s, early 80s, mid 80s, graduating in 89 to now where you have two yeah. kids who are in high school. A lot has changed. A lot looks exactly the same. I've been here since I was five years old because I was actually born in Beirut, Lebanon, and then came to this country when my father was doing a residency program at the Mayo Clinic and at John Hopkins. So we went to Minnesota and Maryland and then ended up here uh, when the civil war in Lebanon started. We had no place to go. My family said, don't come back. It's bad. Stay in the States. And so we said, where are we going to live? Where would we like to live? And of course, I was only, I was very young. And my father said he wanted to work with Harvard. So we came to Boston. And that's why Westwood was the choice because he ended up at the VA hospital and worked there the, his entire career, became the chief of surgery and did all of this incredible work with the VA hospital and with Harvard. So we have been in Westwood since I was five years old. And I've at the time, I was probably the most ethnic person in Westwood at the time. And I remember there were a few, there were like two other people that were like Lebanese. I wasn't Palestinian, but they were Lebanese in my class. And I was like, oh, they, they kind of look like me. <laughs> But everyone else was either Irish or Italian, I think, in this town, and which is great because I'm, you know, I feel like I'm Irish, but I'm not. But um, but that's how I grew up feeling like I was definitely different, and I definitely didn't look like everybody else, or, or you know, I had parents that had accents. You know, it was just different. I was culturally different, but seeing the town now it's a different place completely and because I remember going into class in Hanlon when my kids were my boys were in Hanlon and the teacher asked me to like come in and talk about my heritage because it was like heritage week or something and so I talked about my my heritage and the teacher said to me just ask the students how many of their parents were born somewhere else in another country and I was like, really? And she said, yeah, just ask. And so I said, so all of you children, like where were, like, is there, was anyone's parents born in another country? Can you raise your hand? And I think 80% of the class was, and I don't know if it was just that particular class, but I, you know, someone was like, I, my, my dad was born in Russia. My dad, my mom was born in Albania. My, you know, father was born in China. You know, there were so many cultures within this one Hanlon class that I was so, I blown away by because that was not the case for me growing up. So I just, it, that makes me feel like there's so much hope for this town to just not be super homogenous, like just to have a little more inclusivity, which makes me really happy. And it still has this really great charm of this town. And we have like more cultures in, I think a little more, definitely more than when I was growing up. I love, I, I do love everybody and I love like learning about everybody and I love meeting people. I'm on social media. I'm on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. On Instagram, I'm yoga with Hanya and it's spelled H-A-N-I-A. And on Facebook, it's just, I have yoga with Hanya as well. Um, and I also have my personal page, which is Hanya Kuri Trapper. And then I also have yoga with Hanya, which is my just website, yogawithanya.com or restandreturn.com, which is the name of my book. Um, so that's probably the ways, but anyone, I would love to, I'd love to hear people's stories. People feel free to reach out to me. There's my dog barking in the background. It's been a great journey. I've enjoyed getting to know you. Yeah. When I think about the first time, I, I kind of knew who you were. I'd seen you at some social events, but I remember saying hello and introducing myself during Westwood Day. Yes. And think how far things have come since then. I know. That was... A while ago. But it's been great. So we'll revisit. We'll come back here. We'll do a little sit down with Chris as well. But we appreciate you sharing your story. For those listening, you can go right down to the link on this podcast to read the story of Hanya and Chris, learn a little bit more about their family, about their journey, because it really is cool. We wove in some of Chris's lyrics that are pretty representative of your relationship, which is great. So I appreciate you opening up your story and your family to us and uh, can't wait to continue the friendship and relationship. I'm so thankful. Thank you so much, Tom. Appreciate you, it. You got it. If you've got ideas for other great people we can chat with, don't hesitate to reach out. T. Leiden at bestversionmedia.com. But for now, from the kitchen of the trappers, <laughs> that's the latest edition of the Westwood Living Podcast. Mm -hmm.